Hey, what's up guys? It's Tori from Teacher's Books and today I'm going to be doing my favorite books of 2015 and my 2015 reading wrap up. So in the year of 2015, I managed to read 65 books, which was my goal for the year, so I'm very glad that I reached it. I read exactly 65 and I planned and hoped I could read 65, so it was perfect. Goodreads made a little stats page for each person that did the reading challenge and told you like what kind of books you read and stuff like that, so I'm gonna do that before I go into my favorite books of the year. The year of 2015, I read 65 books, which equaled 22,324 pages. The shortest book I read was Elixir by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which was 74 pages, and the longest book I read was Oblivion by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which was a thousand and five pages. The average length of my books that I read was 349 pages and the most popular book that I read uh, globally was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone which was a reread for me which had uh, over three million reads. Holy crap. And then also the least popular book that I read was Oedipus the King which I read for school and only 61 people read that book as well. My average rating for 2015 was 4.2 stars which is pretty high so that means I read a lot of good books this year. The highest rated on Goodreads that I read was Hey Let's Make a Band by Five Seconds of Summer and that received a rating of 4.71. I managed to read a lot of good books this year so I'm just gonna go through some of my favorite books of the year. I don't have my top 15 books of 2015 I just decided to pick the ones that stood out to me the most and that was how many. There's actually 12 on this list or 12-ish so yeah let's get started. These are in no, no particular order because I couldn't pick these books and then once I picked them number them it was just too difficult for me so I just just labeled them put them down in no order. So the first series that I want to mention is the Raven Cycle series by Maggie Steve Otter. This was a series that I read near the beginning of the year and I really really enjoyed it and I cannot wait for the Raven King. I'm just so pumped for it. This book is about a girl named Blue who comes from a family of psychics except she's the only one without psychic abilities. She's kind of a battery of sorts so when she's around her family they get better readings and they can see uh, different things that they might not see with her around and she meets this group of Raven Boys. Raven Boys are just people who go, it's an all boys high school and so she meets these four boys that go to this school and they're all really rich and all that and it just goes from there and they try to find these ley lines which might lead to this guy who would grant one wish and Yanzi, one of the raven boys, really wants to find this wish and also she's not allowed to kiss anybody because she got a fortune when she was younger that if she kisses someone that she loves they will die. I just really loved how this was written. I love the characters. These are some of my favorite characters. They're just so diverse and so dynamic and I really really enjoyed them and I can't wait for the last book and so it had to be on my list this year considering I read all three that are so far. The next series that I want to mention is the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. I really really enjoyed this series and I finally got around to reading it. I started it years ago, The Lost Hero, and I got halfway through and then got bored for some reason. I just, it wasn't the same without Percy, you know? And so finally I actually read the whole series. My favorite were the third and fourth book. The ending was not the best, but that's normally what people are saying about this series. I loved to be able to reunite with all these new, these characters and see some new characters. It was really really awesome. And I can't wait for the Trials of Apollo that come out this year, so that's definitely something I'm really, really looking forward to. Heroes of Olympus series is just a continuation of the Percy Jackson series. They're a bit older. Basically, Romans and Greek kind of come together, and it's sort of a mixture of all the gods, which is really, really interesting, and that's why I found this book, these series, like, super awesome, because you got to see both sides, and since I took... Uh, classical civilizations course in school. It was perfect because I just learned all of the Roman stuff So not only did I already have like a Greek background But I also now had a Roman background and I could kind of already understand what they were talking about Which was really cool and the next series I have a lot of series on here that I want to mention is the Dark Elements series by Jennifer L. Armentrout She is one of my favorite authors and I read this series this year It's just so good and it's such a good series and even though it has like a love triangle It was a really really well done love triangle and I'm really happy with who she ended up up with and I'm happy that in the last book she didn't wait till the very end to choose who she wanted to be with so you actually got to see them together and I hate when books you don't get to actually see them together because I think why go through all that trouble and not actually get to see them interact with each other when they're actually in a relationship. These books are hilarious, they're really funny, they're really really awesome and I just I Mm, I really really like them and if you haven't read them I really really highly suggest them. These books are about a girl who is half gargoyle half demon and the gargoyles are kind of like the protectors of earth and they fight the demons and they kind of took her in even though she never really felt like she belonged there because even though she's part gargoyle she's also part demon so you know. And then she meets this demon named Roth and the thing is she also can't kiss people. A lot of things with kissing in these young adult books but she can't kiss people because 
uh, she'll suck out their soul and then she meets this a demon man named Roth and he has no soul. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. The next book I want to mention is The Help by Catherine Stockett. I really, really loved this book. This is a book that completely uh, moved me when I read it. it. had a bit of a slow start for me, but I really, really enjoyed it once I got into it, and it's my favorite standalone for sure. I really, really love it. I loved it so much, and I read it for school, and I'm so happy I got the chance to read it this year because I've been wanting to read it ever since it came out. I had seen the movie before I read the book, but I still really, really enjoyed the book, and it is quite different from the movie, even though the movie is really, really good. I just really loved all the characters in it, and I loved how intricate and how so many things were going on during the book, and Yes, it was just so good and I'm so happy that I read it and some people don't think it's that amazing but I don't, I don't know, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was worth the 500 to 600 pages that it was. It like was completely necessary to have all of those pages which is good. I hate when books are long for no reason. Like why are we reading filler, you know what I mean? The Help is basically about a girl who decides to write a book from the Help's point of view and all the things that go on in this town in Jackson. Basically, I just love this book and I'm so happy I got to read it this year. And the next little duo that I want to mention is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han Duology. These books my friend Hannah pushed on me when she read the first one and said it was absolutely amazing and I read it and it was so cute and so adorable and I really, really love it and I really love Peter and I love Laura Jean. Basically, these books are about a girl who writes love letters to all the boys she crushes on and she addresses them but never sends them out because obviously it's yeah she wouldn't like I no no never never <laughs> and so basically one day she comes home and all the letters have sent have been sent out to her past crushes and things kind of go from there and it was so funny and I love the family aspect in this book it was really really good and I loved all the characters and I really really loved the first one the second one wasn't as good but it was still really good for a contemporary because it's hard to stretch out contemporaries without having them fight in every single book you know what I mean these books were just really well done and I want to read more of Jenny Han's work after reading this series because I really really enjoyed the humor and I loved the family aspect and yeah there's just so many things that really really clicked in this book for me and in the series so I definitely want to give more of her stuff a try and yeah <laughs> And the next book I finally got around to reading this year and I'm so happy I did because it was so worth it and that is Holes by Louis Satcher. Holes by Louis Satcher is about a boy who ends up having to go to camp because they think he stole some running shoes. So he goes to this camp and every day he has to dig a hole. I don't know what they're looking for or why they're digging, they just have to do it. And then all these things get revealed and wow, I just really really loved how everything came back around in this book. Like you're reading from his point of view but then you also go back like however many hundreds of years back to like the old western times when it was like the ancestors of people living there. You find out all these things about all the characters and all kind of comes together and right after I read the book I watched the movie again. I've, have been, I've seen it before and so I watched it again and it was really really awesome and it was really close to the book. I think it's because he directed it or he helped write it or something like that. That book was just really really good and I can't wait to read more from him because I read that book in one day. Like I read it in literally a day because I just couldn't put it down. I just wanted to know what happened and it was one of those books that was just really easy to read and it was really easy to read because it was so good, not because it was a children's book. Like that had nothing to do with it. It was just a really really well written very entertaining story. The next series I want to mention is the Throne of Glass series. I finally jumped on that bandwagon and I'm so happy I did. I've only managed to read a Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and The Assassin's Blade. My favorite one so far is definitely The Assassin's Blade. I loved the novellas in this. I really love going back and seeing what she did to end her to make her end up in the position in Throne of Glass and why she hides things from people. I really, really love this series because it's funny, it's definitely, to like, you can tell it's a fantasy book, but at the same time, the humor is just like humor in a present day novel, so it was really good. Love the world, I love the magic. I haven't even read the next two books and I already know it's gonna go to amazing places and I can't wait to read the rest of this series and the fact that it's gonna be six books is just, yes, it's so good and I really hope, it's probably gonna get adapted. I would not be surprised if it does because it's definitely one of those books that like everyone's reading right now. There's just certain books that like everyone should try and this is definitely one of them and I'm so happy I started this series and though it takes me a while to get through those books just because of the fantasy aspect in them, I always really really enjoy them and the ending always makes me want to pick up the next one like instantly. The next book I read I've been wanting to read for so long ever since I heard Jesse the Reader or 
Christine or somebody, somebody was talking about it and the second I heard it I knew I really 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 wanted to read it and my chapters never had it and then finally when his new book came out they came out with this one at my chapters and so I bought it and that was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It was an amazing amazing uh, science fiction novel and I really really enjoyed it and it's just all surrounding this video game and this video game is freaking amazing like it's so so good I just love it I just want to play this video game so badly I loved all the 80s pop culture references if I was a bit older I probably would have enjoyed it even more and I just loved the characters I loved how like it was mature but it wasn't like like any kid could read it if they really wanted to there's just some language in it really it's so intricate and it's so well done and I'm so excited for the movie like I can't wait to start hearing information about this movie because if they do the graphics right it's going to be been fantastic like absolutely amazing and I just can't wait to read it I'm like or see it I can't wait to see it I'm just so excited basically it's about this video game and this guy dies that created the video game and he sends out a message when he dies to everyone that's on the game which is the entire world because the world is going to shit and so everyone plays in this video game because it's like their escape and so it says like if you find three keys and open three gates then you get my entire fortune and complete control of the video game and so this one guy who was in these trailer stacks in the middle of nowhere decides I'm gonna try to find this and he becomes a gunter and the gunters are the game hunters that hunt for the keys and there's also this other corporation that's after the video game because they want control of the video game to start charging monthly fees and putting in advertisements and all that stuff because they want to be able to make money off the video game even though the game's like free for everyone to play it's, it's really really freaking awesome it, it's really really good and I highly recommend it especially if you're any kind of a video game nerd geek anything like that you'll probably like it if you like Star Wars You'll probably like it if you like any old school movies like anyone can relate to it just because there's so many different sides to this novel Next thing I want to mention is not a book series or book per se It's an author actually and that is Colleen Hoover This year was the first time I ever read a Colleen Hoover book and now I am hooked She is an auto buy author for me for sure I just want to read all of her books now and be She's just such a good writer and she just grips you in like I was reading Point of Retreat and I looked down I'm 75 pages in in and I didn't even realize like I I just wanted to read like five pages I just wanted to start a little bit and you can read her books in a day two days They're just so easy and they're so so good and I just love the romance in them And they're just really really good books and even though they're expensive books I just really really like them and they look so pretty on my shelf my favorite book for her is probably Confess and maybe someday and well, I don't know, it's so hard because they're all so good, but I really love the concept of con Confess and Maybe Someday. I really, really like them. So if you want to pick up Colleen Hoover, I suggest starting with those ones. Definitely going to read anything else she puts out this year, this coming year. I'm so excited. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about her, but I really, really love her books. Another book that I read a while ago, and I kind of forget what happened in most of the book, but I know I really enjoyed it, and that is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Yes, I got the author right. Yeah. If someone quizzed me on like book knowledge, I would do way better in school than I am now, even though I'm doing fine, but you know. Anyway, so I read Red Queen this year, and even though I just read the first book because like the other books aren't out yet, I remember really, really enjoying the book. I don't remember too much what it's about other than all the red bloods are like outcasts and they're like the slaves to the silver bloods because the silver bloods have like special powers and stuff, and then all of a sudden, she does some special power and she's a red blood so they don't understand why this is happening and then all these things kind of unravel and stuff like that but I don't remember how this book ended really like I'm gonna have to like reread at least the last few chapters to kind of understand where I am when the glass sword comes out because I'm super pumped for that book for sure I know everyone's freaking out about it I remember really loving this book I don't remember like exactly why I just remember really really enjoying it I read it right at the beginning of the year so it's kind of fuzzy to me but I can't wait to read the next ones and yeah that's all I have to say about this book and the next series I want to mention, there's a lot of series on here just because I read a lot of series. Like, not a lot of standalone, a lot of series. And that is the Covenant series by Jennifer Armentrout. I loved her, I loved this series. It was so good because it had Greek gods, which is one of my favorite things ever. I love reading about Greek gods and kids with special powers and all that stuff. So it had Greek gods and it had Jennifer Armentrout's humor and romance and sass. It's about this girl named Alex and she is a half-blood and the half-bloods either have to go into servitude or they have to go fight in the war and fight against the demons that kind of hunt them. And the demons are pures. Pures are like above the halves. And I know it's kind of confusing, but the peers are like above the halves in a sense and they like rule over the pures and they can get turned into demons and they have like special powers and stuff. So then she finds out her mother was turned into a demon and she kind of has to cope with that and learn and 
figure out if she has to go and kill her mother or not and it's just really really interesting and I highly recommend it. I'm running out of things to say other than I really really like the book, I really really like the series, blah blah blah. <gasps> The last series that I want to mention that I read this year, or part of it this year, was the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. That's her name. The Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. I only read the first two books in the series and I still really have to get to the third one. I really should before I forget what happens. And yeah, because it's such an amazing world. I don't understand how she writes so well. Like, I don't understand how she conveys all her thoughts about this world in such an interesting and unique way. I really, really love it and it doesn't focus on the romance, which is good because I like romance, but like this world is just so good that you don't need to focus on the romance. You just need to focus on this world that's amazing that she's built around you. And it's basically about this girl who does errands for this other race of people and she doesn't really know what they are and she doesn't know how she really managed to like meet up with them and become like this runner in between these two worlds between Earth and this other world that she doesn't really know much about. And then um, one time she tries to go back through this door and to visit these people and they aren't there anymore and she can't catch them and she doesn't know why. And it's about this world of demons and angels and all these things come together and oh, it was so good. It was, it's so, so good. And I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. It's just so intricate and so well thought out. It's like reading like a JK Rowling book really because like she, you can tell she put a lot of thought into that series when she read wrote it and I'm just so excited to read the last one. So that's it for my favorite books of 2015. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, sorry if it was kind of repetitive but like I loved all the books I listed here so obviously I have the same kind of feelings about them. I just love them all and I want all of you to read them if you haven't read them yet for sure. If you read any of these books let me know down below. I would love to discuss with you and if you have any good recommendations for me to read in the new year definitely let me know because I'm starting to kind of think about what I want to read in these next few months. So yeah. Uh, once again, you can follow me on my Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and my blog. I'll put all my links down below. Thanks for watching and keep on reading, guys. Bye!